Okay, so now we get to look at a stereochemistry um, in food and how we label what our different uh, stereo uh, isomers are, our optical stereo isomers. Um, and so there's three different conventions for naming these. Um, the first, and we'll look at these in more detail uh, as we go down to, the first is the D and L system. Um, and this is normally a capital D and a, and a capital L, but normally they're smaller um, than the other text, so it's a small capital D, small capital L, um, is used for naming most of our amino acids, most of our carbohydrates, um, but it doesn't uh, work and it can't apply to uh, all families of compounds. For most other stereoisomers and, and things that aren't necessarily food chemistry related, we have an R and S system, which has a set of rules of whether the rotation is going to be to the right, um, which would be called clockwise, or to the left, which would be our counterclockwise. So we'll look at those two different systems. There also is another system that is a small d, or small l, sometimes this is plus or uh, minus l notation, and this, as we'll talk about later on, just refers to the direction that the uh, plane of light is rotated. So it doesn't necessarily uh, refer to the actual structure of the organic compound, only um, the, po the polarization, I suppose, or the, or the rotation of the polarized light. So what we're going to look at first is, I, I think, perhaps the, the more difficult um, type of explanation for our stereochemistry. Well, it's not difficult. We just have to learn the convention of how we rank our substituents. So first we have to find the, uh, the carbon that's going to have chirality. And remember, it has to have four unique bonds to it. So it has to have four unique bonds. Notice these carbons here have four unique bonds. They have a hydroxyl group, a methyl group, an ethyl group, and a hydrogen. And notice this one does too, but again, this one is the perfect reflection of it. Again, those uh, darkened in arrows mean those things are coming out from the board. Um, the other one is going back, and then obviously the one with just lines is supposed to be... Um, flat on the piece of paper. So it's, it's kind of difficult to, trying to imagine these things in three dimensions when they're, uh, when they're on a, a two-dimensional piece of paper or a computer screen, iPad screen, as, as you might be watching. But how we rank them is basically we rank them on order of their atomic number. So we want to look at the atomic numbers. The highest atomic number is going to be rank number one. So here we have the hydroxyl group, the alcohol group. That is going to be number one. Over here, that also is going to be number one. It's going to be the number number one no matter what. Now we go to the second position, and we have a carbon and we have a carbon, and those are the same. So at that sec at that at that one step away, it's the same, but the ethyl group is bonded to two hydrogens and a carbon. So if we think about it, we can even add that up. So two hydrogens would be two times one for its atomic number plus a carbon. Well, that's going to be a total of an eight. So it's kind of worth Eight, whereas this one's just bonded to three hydrogens, so three times one is just three. So it's overall, so we so if it's the same in the second position, then we have to look at what's in the position beyond that bond. And if it's, uh, say if it's a double bond, um, then we'd count it twice. So uh, just as an example, say this had this carbon here, but this was doubly bonded to a carbon there, then this would rank number two, as opposed to our ethyl group. So uh, double bonds and stuff like that's going to count as well. And again, this is something that we just have to look at examples, and it gets easier and easier as we do the examples. So ethyl group is going to be 2. Uh, methyl group is going to be 3. Again, ethyl group here is 2. Methyl group is 3. Now, so we've ranked them. That's the important part. Now we want to see what direction they're going to rotate the light. To do that, we have to be able to, and this is my eyeball, those are my eyelashes. We have to be able to look down that hydrogen bond. So we want that hydrogen bond. We want to turn the structure so that hydrogen bond's in the back. So if you imagine this in number two, if I spin that so the hydrogen is in the back, I'll have the alcohol group this way. I will have the methyl group this way, and the ethyl group CH2, CH3 down this way. So now if I number them again, so hydroxide was one ethyl was 2, this was 3. Notice what the rotation is. If I follow 1, 2, 3, I'm getting a counterclockwise rotation on an enantomer 2. If I do the same thing with my enantomer 1, I'm going to spin it now so that, again, I'm looking down this hydrogen bond. If I spin that, I have alcohol group here. Here's my ethyl. I'm just going to write ethyl. And here's my methyl group. 
And again, if I rank them one, two, three, notice what's happening here. The rotation is this direction. That would be my clockwise direction. Clockwise direction, by the way, is going to be our R. Counterclockwise is going to be our S. So here's another example of it. Um, notice, like it says here, the configuration R is from the Latin rectus, rectus for right, and counterclockwise is S for sinister. Um, and those are our descriptors. And notice what they have to do in, in this diagram, which is very similar to what we were doing. Um, here is our OH is our, um, our red here is our alcohol. The pink here is our imaginary ethyl group, and the green would be our methyl. And notice what's happening there. If we rank them one, two, three, we're seeing the rotation clockwise here. That is our S. And what we are trying to do, this is nice because we spun it to look right down that hydrogen bond. Notice this is what we have to do on paper is kind of try to look right down that hydrogen bond. Rank them one, two, three. The rotation is going like that. So it is a clockwise rotation. If we have a clockwise rotation, we have an R rotation. If we have a counterclockwise rotation, we have our S rotation. So here's an actual molecule that can have two different enantiomers uh, about its stereochemical center right there around that carbon. Um, so if we take a look at it, let's see if we can't figure out how these are labeled R and R S over here. If we take a look at it, notice, and the pH is just talking about the phenol group that's attached there. It, if we go in and take a look at this, um, notice in that first position, um, there's a carbon, there's a carbon, and that also is a carbon. So there's a carbon in all those positions. So we have to go to the second position to see which is ranked higher. Um, well, if we just break these down and follow them down to the two places here, notice COOH is a carboxylic acid. So this carbon is bonded to two oxygens. One's double bonded and then a single bond. So that would be three times eight. That'd be a total of 24, right? as far as its total atomic number of what's bonded to that carbon. That is how we have to distinguish the second position. This one's just bonded to three hydrogens, so that's easy. Three times one, that's probably going to be pretty low. If we look at the phenol group, if we look at this carbon, it is double bonded to another carbon. So if we take a look at this carbon, it is double bonded to this carbon, singly bonded over here to this carbon. So that would be, again, three times the atomic number of carbon, which is six. So that would be a total of 18. But again, that is going to come after our total of 24. So my ranking of these would be one here. Uh, maybe I'll use different colors. So one on my carboxylic acid, two on my phenol group, and three on my methyl group. Now again, if we look down the bond, and it, it might be useful to clear some of this stuff off here, Okay, so if we take a look now, um, remember we have to try to look down that bond. So here's my eyeball again. Um, looking down that bond, so that hydrogen is in the back. Again, if carboxylic acid is one, two, and three, we'll see that the rotation is going in this direction. If you're looking down that way and you're looking at it, that should be our clockwise rotation, which is why we get that R. Again, on the other one, one, two, three. 3. Notice that looks like a clockwise rotation, but it, this has the uh, hydrogen coming out at us. So it's actually reversed. So we have to imagine being behind. Can I draw an eyeball behind it? I don't know if I'm... I don't, I'm going to stretch my art skills here. Um, so I, my eyeball now... Okay, we'll get my eyeball color. My eyeball now is looking right here. So it's actually looking at the bond uh, from, from behind of where we're um, arranged on this structure, so from behind the screen, and in that case, it would look like the rotation is this way. So to us, to us on this side, that looks like a clockwise rotation, but if you're behind the board, again, with this H coming out at us, well, then that looks like a counterclockwise rotation, so that's where we get this S. So this is where it's going to be difficult, is we have to write those, but you also have to be able to spin that molecule in your head so that you're looking down the right plane to be able to rank whether they're going to be R or S rotations. Okay, so now D or L. D or L, um, and it's plus or negative, is just referring to whether it's being optically active, and it doesn't necessarily um, 
relate directly to our R and S configuration. This D and L is completely upon um, uh, which direction it rotates like. So if it's D, which is plus, it's either D or it's plus, that means it's rotating light to the right. Now that doesn't mean that it has a rank substituents that are to the right. It doesn't necessarily align with R at all. Um, it could, but it doesn't necessarily need to. Um, our F or our levatory um, is L or minus, and that just means that it rotates light. So our D or L configurations are purely on the direction that they rotate polarized light. It does not correlate necessarily to our R and S configurations. Okay, now the last one we want to look at is our D or our L. <laughs> and again, this is different than our small d and our small l. This is our capital D, our small capital D, and our small capital L. Um, and what this is looking at is amino acids. So amino acids, um, just like the name says, again, amino acid has a carboxylic acid group somewhere on it and an amino, or an amine somewhere on it, so that's where it's an amino acid. Now we can have lots of different looking amino acids, but again, what we want to do is be able to rank these um, and be able to tell whether they're the L or D, identify those. Well, the rule with amino acids, with amino acids, and, and you'll know this is the right rule because it has that amino group, it has a carboxylic acid, so this is how we're going to name um, amino acids. Um, also used for carbohydrates, but again, mainly amino acids. Um, to label these, we're going to use what's called the Korn method, C-O-R-N. What the Korn stands for is first the C-O, it means we're looking for that carboxylic acid. Here's our carboxylic acid, so that's going to be our first group. R is going to be um, our carbon chain. Notice this is just a methyl, but this could be a long chain depending on what carboxylic acid or what amino acid we're looking at. So this is our carbon chain, so that is two. And then finally, our nitrogen group, our amino, is three. Now again, we're going to look at it very similar to how we looked down when we were configuring out whether we had R or S rotation. Um, we're going to see if it's a clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. So again, we have to configure our eyeball to where it's supposed to be. We still want to look down the bond with the hydrogen in the back. If the hydrogen is in the back here, notice what we have for a rotation. The rotation is going in this direction. Um, from that perspective, that rotation looks counterclockwise. Counterclockwise rotation is going to be our L, uh, which, again, is the same as the same uh, with our small L, uh, gives a counterclockwise rotation of light. Again, they aren't aligned necessarily at all, but at least L always means counterclockwise, depending on which configuration we're using, it still means counterclockwise. Notice if we look at D over here, again, carboxylic acid group is one, um, our R chain, our carbon chain is two, um, and then the amino group, the end, the corn piece is three. Again, the rotation now is this direction, and notice the hydrogen is here, so we'd be looking at down the bond from this direction. And to me, that looks like a clockwise rotation, so it is D. So that's how we configure whether it's the capital D or capital L. And again, that is mainly used for amino acids when we have that carboxylic acid and that amine group attached. Okay, so now hopefully you're ready for some uh, memorization here um, because what it wants us to do is it's talking about that these different enantiomers um, can vary in their tastes, in their odors, in their toxicity. And so what it, it wants you to do is, is it's going to want you to distinguish between um, the different properties of different enantiomers found in food. Well, the two big examples here are limonene which in the D rotation, okay, and again, that's based on polarized light, um, in the D rotation smells of oranges, and in the L uh, rotation smells of lemons. The other example that you will see somewhere, or it will ask you for, is carvone, which tastes of caraway seeds in the D, in the um, clockwise rotation, and spearmint in the left-hand rotation, or in the counterclockwise rotation. The one other piece of this that I found interesting, and again, you can read through these, I don't need to read all of this to you, but the other thing here that I think is actually pretty interesting is that notice natural raspberry flavor is due to a R alpha ion. So again, a, a clockwise rotation uh, enantiomer. Um, however, notice synthetic raspberry flavoring contains both isomers, and notice other synthetically made foods often have a race 
a racemic mixture of each enantiomer. So it has a, again, when we see this word, this means it has a 50% 50, 50 mixture of both of the uh, enantiomers. So naturally, notice in a lot of these conditions, naturally amino acids are in the L form, like it says up here. Um, D amino acids would taste sweet. So naturally occurring foods tend to have one or the other. Um, based on how those are constructed, but when they're made synthetically, they're more often to have a 50-50 mixture. These structures that I have here are actually our um, carbone, and here we have our R um, rotation, here we have our S, and let's just take a second to see why these are R and S. And again, nicely these have them drawn so those hydrogens are in the back. So when we look straight on this carbon here and here, um, as long as we've ranked our substituents, we can tell directly without having to rotate this compound, which is our R and our S. And obviously it already says, but we want to double check why. So notice in the second position there's a carbon, there's a carbon, and there's a carbon. So we have to go one B on that and see what is bonded to those carbons. We'll notice this carbon has a doubly bonded carbon and a singly bonded carbon. Each of these only have one carbon bonded to them. So since this has uh, an order of three carbons, even though it's just a doubly bonded carbon, a single, that would be, again, six times one, two, three, that would be 18, whereas these only have one carbon bonded to them, and the other positions are hydrogen. So this group is one. This is our one. Now, we have to compare what's left. So we have this carbon and this carbon we're comparing. So again, they're exactly the same. They're bonded to one carbon. They both have two hydrogens. So we go to the second position. Here, we're double bonded to an oxygen, and bonded to a carbon. So that is again 8 for the carbon, or for the oxygen, I'm sorry, because of its atomic number, times 2 because it's doubly bonded, and then um, one carbon attached. Now let's compare that to what's over here on this side. Well, that has a doubly bonded carbon, but that carbon is only doubly bonded, it doesn't have an oxygen. So in this ranking, that's number 1, this is number 2, the 2 side, this is the 3 side. So um, this is carbon 1 carbon 2, carbon 3. So again, if that hydrogen is in the back, notice our rotation is in the clockwise direction. So it is R. Notice on this when it's flipped, this is 2, this is 3. Now our rotation is counterclockwise, so it is R S enantiomer.